You're back with The Nation and Housing Minister Phil Heatley. We've been talking about mining. We're going to move on uh, to his other portfolio now and look at the issue of housing in New Zealand. Um, Minister, I'd like to raise a quote that Bill English said earlier this week. He said that um, the most unfair aspect uh, in relation to affordable housing is that there's no housing being built for people in the lowest quartile of income. So mm. how do you fix that problem? What do you have to do? Look, if you ask me if there was one fundamental issue that's driving that, it would be simply this, is that the cost of land, the cost of sections is so high that when a builder comes along and buys a bare section and has to build a house on it because he's paying so much for the land he has to build a flash big house to make any money and so if you get land prices down at a reasonable level you can start building you know less expensive houses you know houses that don't necessarily have two or three bathrooms you know all that type of thing so get the land price under control and uh, land size under control, and I think you're a long way there. Look, it's not the silver bullet, but I'd say it'd be top of the list. How? Yeah. Um, oh, look, uh, we've been talking to Auckland Council about this um, quite a bit because I know Mayor um, Brown's, you know, concerned about it as well. It's a combination of, well, essentially we need more supply, so we need more houses and we need more sections, mm -hmm. and there's two ways you can do it, and as a national party we think you should do both. First of all, release more new land for housing, so green fields. I mean, most cities have, you know, some low... Pro unproductive land that they could release for housing. Extending city yep, limits. That's right. And then this, which we've always done, you know, for a century, we've extended city limits. Um, so keep doing that in a sensible way, but do it in combination with subdividing large properties inside town. So if you've got an elderly couple in Auckland, and I tell you what, there's thousands in this situation, they're in a quarter acre or a half acre section, they'd love to cut it in half, um, build a new house for them on one half and sell the other bit off and make, you know, three or four hundred thousand dollars for their retirement. They don't do it because it costs them $40,000, two years, and they may not even be consented. So when, and that's crazy. When are we going to see the changes then? Well, the um, problem is existing now. Yeah, yeah. So Auckland Council, if I can go to that example, they've already said that they're going to have 60 or 70% of new housing within city limits, and then they're going to increase um, the, the expansion of Auckland in a sort of a sensible staged manner. So that's good. The, you know, the balance well, is really good. What does that but, mean? Up? Out? Uh, uh, I think both. So in terms of... so up and out, um, but what we're doing with them is, it, it, for example, in, in Tamaki in Auckland, the council and the government have just formed a company in Tamaki where there's 6,000 houses up there. We own 3,000 of them, they're state houses. They're on half acre and quarter acre sections, most of them. We're going to go through those um, houses and we're going to sub subdivide properties. We're going to rebuild state housing. We're going to put new insulated housing in, not you know 1950s cold ones, and we're going to go through and increase housing supply. Now if we can do that as an example up in Tamaki, and we're not talking hundreds, thousands, um, we think other areas of the country can look on that as an example. So that's, that's state housing playing a big part. Yep. Local government often say we can't consent these large projects because the risk is too high. Right. Um, so is uh, central government doing its own building, removing that risk, is that, a, is that a real viable solution here? Shouldn't you be doing more of these, uh, government actually spending more of its own money right. on building more housing stock? Well, we're, we're doing it in Tamaki because we own 57% of the houses, so one out of every two houses up in Glen Innes and, and uh, Point England and that area is, you know, the taxpayer. It's, I mean, it's just amazing. So the reason why we're targeting that area is the concentration of government investment is so much and there is so much wasted land and those people are living in old houses and they should be living in decent ones. Um, there are other examples across the country where we could do that sort of stuff, but that's our first cab off the rank. But I've got to say, you know, historically in New Zealand, and it's worked well for us, it's not up to the state to provide, you know, housing for, you know, nine out of ten people. They want to buy their own home and be independent. Who's going to pay for the Sub, for the new houses being built in Tamaki? Oh, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, um, a, a, a selling off of land, a reinvesting the money in building, that type of thing. And who so, are you selling it to? Developers um, or NGOs? Oh, well, we, we're going to be putting out eventually, I mean, they're working through this over the next 12 months, but they'll be putting out requests for proposals um, to um, developers who will work with community housing organisations and others. And what we'll have is, in the end, we'll have a state house, we'll have a house owned by a first home buyer, um, a house maybe on a large, you know, larger house in a smaller section, a community housing organisation. The idea is to have a really mixed development. What's, what's stopping these houses being really expensive then? Building nice big tall houses on a small section and, and 
putting up the prices. What? Living. Oh, yeah, well, look, so, some of them, um, you know, might be sort of at the higher end, but the idea up there, um, because it's a neighbourhood where you've got um, large sections at the moment, the reality is, you know, subdivisions, smaller houses, um, that type of thing is, is where we're heading. So, so, look, there'll be a combination. If it's so important, why is there um, less capital available for this in the latest budget? It's dropped by about two and a half million. Um, no, that, no that the social housing budget is more for uh, a fund for social housing providers to apply for to build their own houses elsewhere. So they might add, you know, 30 houses to their stock or just 10 or, you know, 50 or whatever it is. Um, so that's what we're doing there. But the, that's just a sort of a cash grant system. What we're also looking at is the transfer of state houses, which might be surplus to Housing New Zealand, to some of these organisations. Because what will happen is, say, if we transferred 200 houses to an organisation and they said, look, in 10 years, maybe we could double that number. The reality is the government's in no position to double that number, but they might be. That, and so we're looking at those sorts of opportunities. That social housing fund is massively oversubscribed, isn't it? That yeah, just it shows is. the level of demand there. That, oh. so, and, and the Productivity Commission has said that the fund is not up to it, the union is not up to it, mm. uh, the unit that you've set up is not, not up to it. So that's only a, it's a sticking plaster on a, on a weeping wound, isn't yeah. it? Well, the thing is, that's just part of um, the strategy. I mean, that, that social housing fund doesn't include Tamaki, of course, it doesn't include Hobsonville, it doesn't include a whole lot of other things we're doing. I mean, we've got 70,000 state houses, it doesn't include that $15 billion investment. So that's just a small part of it. But remember, that that, that unit too has only been open for tw one year. All it's doing at the moment is distributing that 37, or it's distributed the $37 million funding. It's also getting into st state house transfers, the use, better use of Crown land. So it's just early days for that unit. I understand the criticism, but look, we've just got to take, you know, Baby yeah. steps before we That's the we government's run. approach to this, though, for the most part, isn't it? Social housing, um, uh, uh, those, those NGOs, are, are, are your, that's your approach. In the yeah, main, well, what it? we've said is, look, we've got $15 billion worth of state housing, 70,000 state houses, just under. That's our biggest asset. It leaves the energy companies for dead. That's our biggest state asset, is housing New Zealand, state housing, right? That's a huge investment by New Zealanders. We're in no position to build more and more state houses, you know? We're just not in that position. So what we're saying is, look, we want to we want to insulate all our state houses because they're not. We want to upgrade them. We want to do job, uh, work like we are in Tamaki. But in terms of the growth of social housing in New Zealand, we would rather other organisations who are really skilled at it do that work. In the short term, if you look at um, you know the government's housing policy, pretty central to that has been this accommodation supplement. Mm. Surely that is going to blow out when you have rents going up, less mm. houses available. That's going to become a massive cost, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it is a concern to us. So the accommodation supplement costs about 1.2 billion dollars a year and state housing rent subsidies cost about um, 600 million so you you know you're close to the sort of 2 billion mark and that is of a serious concern to us we don't we're a bit like the labor party actually came out recently and, and asked the question is that a good spend for that you know 1.8 so billion you're reviewing it. yeah so we are reviewing it because we um, don't think so we think it probably can be targeted better um, for example you know when you've got someone in a state house getting a really cheap rent you know 80 bucks a week and then they have boarders who get the accommodation supplement, you know, that household could be getting that state house for almost for free. And we've got to be careful You're with that the stuff. You're saying being rorted? Um, oh, look, in the welfare system, you know, you get these uh, things from time to time. If it's, if it's the rules, um, then we've got to change the rules. Clearly, if someone's being dishonest, well, we'll catch them out. When will we see changes? Um, well, we're looking at this at the moment. Um, I'd say by the back end of the year, ministers will get a good feel of, um, of um, where we're going to head with this. It's a um, big piece of work for Paula Bennett because the accommodation supplement's under her purview. And, of course, income-related rents and state housing is under mine. And the Minister of Finance is also taking an interest. Are you committed to income-related rents for this yeah, term of government? Yeah, we're not, going up, uh, we're not going back to market rents for state housing. We've made that very, very clear. Um, we see a place for state housing. Um, but what we're saying is, you know, in terms of income-related rents, accommodation supplement, the relationship between them, you know, what levels they are, who gets them, you know, we're, we're like the Labor Party, we're questioning that. You've dropped Gateway and mm. you're talking about changes to the accommodation supplement. Basically what we're seeing here, aren't we, is a big change from the demand side, helping people get into the existing homes to the supply yeah. side, yeah. So, isn't it? It's a, a big wholesale change to how the government's Viewing approaching it. it. And when will we see the big package? Okay, so so the, what, what we're doing is we're answering the question head on, the problem head on, and that problem is we're not building enough houses, mm. okay, and we're not building enough houses that are affordable. So the release of land, um, making sure that council processes are much more streamlined. Um, That's still months away, though. So what's happening... 
What's happening now, though? To well, well, the reality is for builders. I mean, they've down tools for two or three years because of the recession. They haven't had capital. Um, once they start picking up those tools, and we've started seeing that happening now, we just want to make sure they've got the land to build on and the consenting processes to work with. All right, Housing mm. Minister Philhelly, we do have to leave it there, but thank you. My pleasure.